Good morning, Storytime friends. How are you doing today? It's a new year. Can you believe it? Welcome to 2021 and welcome back to Storytime. I'm so excited to see you again. Now today we're going to be reading about music. And if you remember from our Storytime last week, I said I had a surprise for you. Are you ready to see the surprise? I'm pretty excited, but I'm a little nervous to show it to you. And it has to do with our theme today. Do you know what this is, Storytime friends? This is a ukulele. It's not a guitar. It's a little bit smaller than a guitar. It's a ukulele. Have you ever seen one of these before? Well, my surprise is that I am learning ukulele for story times. So I am learning a new instrument so I can play music with you all and we can sing along together with some music. Does that sound like fun? Did you know the ukulele was first introduced to Hawaii by sailors from Portugal? And it's usually thought of as a Hawaiian instrument, but it actually came from Portugal. You'll hear it a lot in songs like Somewhere Over the Rainbow. You might have heard a ukulele before. Um, or also the band The Beatles, they loved the ukulele. So this instrument is really old. It's been around since 1879. That's a super long time, right? Not this one in particular, but this instrument in general. Um, and as you can see, it's a little bit smaller than a guitar. And it only has four strings instead of six. Guitars usually have six strings. Do you want to know how it makes sound, how it makes the music? You have this right here that's called a fretboard, and it's you make music by holding down different strings on the fretboard in different places. You see that? And then you strum right here. So you could do this chord, or this chord, this chord, or this chord, this chord, this chord. This chord, this chord. Does that sound familiar to you at all, at all, friends? I'm still new, I'm still learning, so I might make some, some mistakes or go slow. But those are the chords that I've been learning for if you're ready for a story. Do you want to sing it together? This time we can use ukulele, a ukulele? I think that'd be pretty fun. What do you think? So story time, friends. I have to concentrate on the music this time, so I'm not going to be able to stand up, but I want you to make sure you still get all of your sillies out before we start reading, okay? So you use the ukulele as your music, and we'll sing along, and I want you to still do what all the song says. Do you remember how it goes? Let's try it together, okay? If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. Clap your hands, story time, friends. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, clap your hands. Are you clapping your hands? All right, friends, what comes next? Stomping your feet. If you're ready for a story, stomp your feet. If you're ready for a story, stomp your feet. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, stomp your feet. Oh, I'm hearing some good foot stomping going along with my music. That's what's so fun about music, right? You can do it with all kinds of things. What do we do next? Let's get our sillies out. If you're ready for a story, turn around. If you're ready for a story, turn around. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story. What do we do? Turn around. All right, friends, one more. It's what I'm already doing. What are you going to do? Are you ready? Are you If you're ready for a story, take a seat. If you're ready for a story, take a seat. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, take a seat. All right, is everyone seated just like me? All right, nice job, story time, friends. What do you think? I'm still learning, so I'm still a little, little hazy on some of the notes, but I bet I'll get better and better as we sing and practice together. What do you think? That was really fun, wasn't it? I like having music. It's fun to sing along with music, too, instead of just singing. And it's fun to do what you are doing with music and dance. All right, well, are we ready for our story since we said our, sang our story time song? Let's read our first story, shall we? All about music. 
All right, this is called Libba. It's about the magnificent musical life of Elizabeth Cotton. And this is by Laura Veers, and it's illustrated by Tatiana Fazala. Fazalizadia. I even practiced that last name and I still messed it up. Let's try it again. Tatiana Fazalizadia. What do you think this is going to be about? I see a girl. I think she's holding a ukulele. I think she might be holding a guitar. Let's find out. We just learned about that story time, friends. What is that? That's a fretboard. And there is Elizabeth Cotton with her guitar. Eliz Libba Cotton heard music everywhere. She heard it in the river when she brought in water for her mother. She heard it in the axe when she chopped wood for kindling. She heard it in the freight trains moving down the tracks near her home. She even heard it when she wasn't allowed to. When her brother Claude was at work, Libba snuck into his room and borrowed his guitar. Dang, she whispered. Claude was right-handed. Libba was not. What hand does Libba use if she's not right-handed? That's right, she's left-handed. She turned the guitar upside down and played it backwards. It was kind of like brushing your teeth with your foot or tying a shoe with one hand. Nobody else played that way, but it was the way that felt right to Libba. Like a train plays rhythm on the tracks, Libba made the notes go up and down like water bubbles in a brook. Libba sang a little song like a girl doing what she was born to do. Libba played guitar upside down and backwards. That's just a little tune I made up. But look at that. See how she's holding the guitar differently? So usually you hold the guitar like I'm holding a ukulele, but she held it down and played it upside down. One time she broke a string. Another time she scratched the wood. Each time she put the guitar back. Dang, Claude said, she's done it again. But then Libba played him a song upside down and backwards. She played a funny way, but she sure was good. Soon Claude moved on to get a job, taking his guitar with him. What do you think Claude is thinking while Libba's playing? Yeah, that's sure a funny way to play a guitar, isn't it? But I bet the music she made it sound beautiful. But Libba never stopped in her tracks. She kept rolling. Now what can a little girl like you do? I can sweep the floors. I can pick the vegetables. I can set the table. She earned 75 cents a month. Pretty soon, she had saved up $3.75. Just enough for a Stella guitar. And Stella is the brand of guitar, Stella guitar. All day and night, she played that guitar. Long after everyone had gone to sleep, her mother would shout, babe, I gotta go to work in the morning. How about a lullaby? So Libba put her mother to sleep, playing upside down and backwards. Libba played and played. And before you could say, dang, she'd written her first song. She wasn't even 13 yet. Freight train, freight train runs so fast. Freight train, freight train runs so fast. Please don't tell me what train I'm on. They won't know what route I've gone. Those were the lyrics to her song. Not even 13 and she wrote a whole song. But even trains get derailed. Time swept Libba up, and she stopped playing guitar. Let's see what happens on her train of life. It looks like she has a baby, and she's on the bus, and she's just busy going about her life, isn't she?
Now she was a tall and stately grandmother working in a department store. Do you see Lib on the side? One day she found a little girl lost in the store. She returned the girl to her mother, Ruth Crawford Seeger, a composer in a famous musical family. Ruth could tell that Libba was kind and gentle, and Libba felt the same way about Ruth. At the, as the Seeker's new housekeeper, Libba moved like a galleon, taking care of the family. She made eight-inch chocolate cakes with six layers each. She loved the spirited children, but most of all, she loved how the home was filled with music. You could hear banjos in the bedrooms, pianos in the parlors, and bass drums in the basement. The children awoke to the, in the morning to bluesmen and drifters sleeping by a smoldering fire. The musicians had funny names like Lead Belly, Woody Guthrie, and Muddy Waters. What do you think this man is playing? Let's see, we have three different instruments that they're all playing. I see a guitar. That's right, there's a piano here, and there's a banjo back there in the back. A banjo is kind of like a guitar or ukulele too, isn't it? But it has a really different sound. As Libba worked, she listened. One day, the kids on the porch and the bluesmen in the living room and the drummers down below heard a sound. It was like a thousand songbirds singing, or a gentle spring rain, or a train rambling down the tracks. What do you think they were hearing? Were they hearing songbirds? No. That's right, they were hearing Libba play her guitar again. It was Libba singing and picking that guitar like she'd never set it down. Dang, cried the kids. She can play, cried the bluesmen. Soon the whole house is turned upside down and backwards. The children were clearing the dishes and washing up. The bluesmen were singing Libba's songs. Ruth was playing along. Everyone wanted to hear Libba's music. Sing Freight Train again, they shouted. The Seegers believed in Libba and helped spread the word about her music. But it was Libba's perseverance, her love of music, and her belief in herself that gave the world her voice. Libba played grand cathedrals in London and velvet theaters in Rome. Thousands of people sang along when she played Freight Train. And now, millions of people know her music. Libba turned her guitar upside down and backwards so she could play it her own way. She turned the music world upside down and backwards too. Libba Cotton never stopped in her tracks. She kept rolling. Freight train, freight train run so fast. Freight train, freight train run so fast. Please don't tell what train I'm on. They won't know what route I've gone. And that is all about Libba. Elizabeth Cotton. And you know what's really cool about this book? She was a real person. Elizabeth Cotton really lived and she really played her guitar upside down and backwards. And what's really cool is she got popular when she was a lot older and played in those grand cathedrals and all of those theaters. And guess what else? Because she played her guitar in a different way, she made a new way of playing the guitar. And it's called cotton picking now. So that's a technique that guitarists really use and it's all from Elizabeth Cotton and how she played her guitar. Isn't that cool? I love that story about Elizabeth Cotton. That's pretty inspiring. That's what I love about music is that there's no right or wrong way to play music. You can play music with anything in your home. You can learn the ukulele like me. You can sing however you wanna express yourself in music. You can do that. Isn't that cool? All right, well, let's read our second book about music story time, friends, because I have a couple more things for you after our second book, okay? But this one is pretty hilarious, and I needed to share it with you. It's called Never Play Music Right Next to the Zoo, 
and it's by John Lithgow, and it's illustrated by Lisa Hernandez. Does that not look like a funny book? <laughs> Let's read it together, okay? What do you think is going to happen? It says, never play music right next to the zoo. So what happens if you do play music right next to the zoo? Hmm. Let's find out. I went to a concert when I was a lad, no older than many of you. I sat with my sister, my mother, my dad, at a band shell right next to the zoo. The soft summer air was so balmy and sweet, and the program was running so long that I found myself falling asleep in my seat despite all the music and song. Uh-oh, falling asleep during a concert. What do you think is going to happen? Those are some pretty good ideas. Those might happen. <gasps> oh no, we're going to find out what really happened. All at once, the conductor erupted with rage. A band of wild animals was storming the stage. <gasps> oh no! Where did those wild animals come from? That's right. They came from the zoo. Oh, children, remember, whatever you may do, never play music right next to the zoo. They'll burst from their cages, each beast and each bird, desperate to play all the music they've heard. The lions and the elephants the bears and the raccoons will steal away trumpets, the flutes, and bassoons. All right, so let's see. They steal a trumpet. Where's a trumpet? That's right. <gasps> the lion's taking away the trumpet. They'll steal away the flutes. Where's the flute? There's the bear taking away the flute. She doesn't want to give it to him, does she? <laughs> And the raccoons are helping out with that. And the bassoon. Who's taking the bassoon? An elephant and a bird. Have you ever seen an elephant play the bassoon? I haven't either. That'd be something to see, wouldn't it? There it is. There he goes. Replace the musicians and chase them away. Then they'll sit in the band shell and play. That is pretty funny, isn't it? Look at that. Look at that elephant playing bassoon. The monkeys played fiddle, the bison played bass, the percussionists were manned by the camel. The percussions. See that all there? <laughs> and what that camel is playing is a timpani, a timpani drum, two of them. The yak played the sax until red in the face, a surprisingly musical mammal. Who would have known that yaks are musical? The bonobo played oboe, the ferret the flute, the jackal attacked the bassoon. The hippo had chosen the tuba to toot by the light of the silvery moon. Siberian tigers, Mongolian goats, a superabundance of bestial notes. What do you think a zoo orchestra would sound like? Squawking? Oh my goodness. As the animal orchestra filled up the air with chaos, confusion, and clatter, the audience calmly continued to stare as if nothing at all was the matter. How do you think how do you think our main character here is feeling? He seems pretty surprised, doesn't he? But the rest of the audience doesn't seem to doesn't seem to care. I wonder why not. There's his family listening. Don't seem to be affected, huh? I trembled with terror, suppressing a scream while well, my parents just sat there enraptured. Well, how I wished it was only a dream and those all those creatures all safely recaptured. But 
But since by the minute I'd grown less afraid, I decided to sit back and watch while they played. Look at that beautiful scene here. I'll bring you closer. There's all the audience. And there's the animal orchestra. The zoo animals are having a good old time. Do you think zoo animals are good musicians? I bet they make some really beautiful music, huh? They finished and each put his instrument down, then bowed and descended the stage. Each shed his tuxedo or evening gown and hurried back home to his cave. There they go, heading off back to their homes. Then each reminisced, so grateful and glad, so full of contentment and pride. My, me my mother, meanwhile, strolled away with my dad, but my sister remained by my side. What is our main character doing? Sister's tickling him. Why is she tickling him? She fell asleep. He's still sleeping, isn't he? She tugged on my sweater and spoke in my ear. You'd better wake up or we're leaving you here. Oh, children, remember, whatever you may do, never play music right next to the zoo. They'll burst from their cages, each beast and each bird. Desperate to play all the music they've heard. No, never play music right next to the zoo. And pay strict attention to rule number two. What do you think rule number two is? Bear it in mind for the rest of your days. What do you think it is? Don't fall asleep when an orchestra plays. Isn't that a funny dream? Fell asleep and thought that all of the animals were playing the instruments? I would still really love to see an elephant play a bassoon in real life, wouldn't you? Well, thank you so much for reading with me today, Storytime Friends. I had so much fun. I hope you enjoyed my ukulele playing. You'll hear a lot more of that soon, okay? So we'll sing and learn lots of different songs together. Um, and make sure you come back next week. Next week, we're going to... Oh, we're going to be so sleepy because we're going to read about bedtime and bedtime stories and nighttime and all of that fun stuff. So make sure you come back, okay? But before you go, let me grab our last thing. If you want to make an instrument at home and you don't know how to play ukulele or anything else like that, that's okay because you can play instrument with lots of household items. You can smash your shoes together. You can play with pots and pans. You can do a zipper. Zippers make really cool noises, any of that. But if you want an instrument, I have crafts for this year. So for these story times, you're going to have crafts that you can get in a kit to go and bring home. And this, my friends, what do you think this instrument is? There's some holes in it, and there's some decorations on it, and it's, it's a hole at the end. And this is wax paper. What does this sound like, you think? It's a kazoo. So you can make your very own kazoo at home, and then you'll have an instrument at home if you want that. So if you're interested in picking up a kazoo craft kit, just go ahead and give us a call at 719-562. 5680 and let us know that you want the story time kits, okay? Every week we're going to be having a new craft to go along with our preschool story times. So if you want our DIY kazoo for this week, it's lots of fun and then you can play all kinds of music at home with the instrument you created. All right. So go ahead and give us a call if you want to pick that up curbside. And thank you so much for joining me today, reading about music and making some music together. And I'll see you next week for bedtime stories, okay? All right, have a great week, Storytime friends.